All right, first thing I did was I took our one and a quarter inch tubing and cut it all into 48 inch sections. We have this last one left, which I'll show you guys step by step how I do this. Heat gun is turned all the way up on both the heat and the fan. And essentially, I'm going to start off by trying to get the outside of the lower end of this pipe heated up. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit as I'm putting heat on it. Nothing too crazy. I'm just gonna do a few passes. And then I'm gonna shift it upwards and allow the heat to go directly on one point of this pipe. I'm gonna move this a little slow, making sure the heat's getting transferred to it all. It doesn't take much. Um, and I really don't have like a time system or anything for it. I just kind of, when I feel like it's enough, it's enough. And I take it and I put it on this jig. This is just a wine bottle jig. I place it down, flare it out, and then I do a couple of turns just to make sure everything's even. And then I hold it for about 15, 20 seconds. And while when what that's doing is it's allowing it to cool off and while it's cooling, it's still holding the shape uh, that we're giving it. So just hold it here for a little bit. It's still gonna be hot when we take it off, but you know, it'll cool down eventually and, and it still holds the shape. So there we go. That is close to the finished product. That's the first step. It's still warm. I do leave, I do like to get it a little brown around the edges, but that's just me. That's how I know it's good. Turn this off. And now comes the fun part. You can see that this, this would actually be okay to use if you wanted to put it in there but we can make this look better. The first thing I noticed I don't like about this is that inner ring sticks out further now. Um, and that's something I like to try to get rid of. Plus we have like a little burr right here, stuff like that. So I take 150 grit because it's all I have. If I had something stronger, I'd definitely be using that. I push it back down on top and I just run this around there for a little bit. And what I'm trying to do right here is actually take out that center lip that made its way outside of the pipe when we flared it. Do a couple passes around here. Okay, you see that did a little bit. It took off not that much actually. I actually built this jig for one and a half inch pipe, so that might be part of the issue here. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I'll take that same uh, 120 grit or 150 grit and just hold it on here. And I start going to town on the inner lip just to get that completely out of the way. And bam, that's it for now, at least. Let me get the rest of these done and then uh, I'll show you what we do next. This is the worst part this entire thing halfway through I'm like is this really worth it is there an easier way to do this I can't really think of one right now 
but if you have a suggestion let me know in the comment section because i would love to hear it but when this is all said and done this is what's going to make this look really really well so take the time do it while you can because once these tubes go in there's no turning back we're finally done we just need to get all the dust out of these make sure that they're good because we're about to paint them Now we're gonna give these things two coats of spray paint. We're gonna be using this Rust-Oleum in aluminum metallic, just to kind of break up the black gator skins, the black vinyl, black lids, all that, doing, doing something a little bit different. And you know, this part is pretty much self-explanatory. You do have to rotate the tubes every once in a while i do give these two coats um, and make sure you get the outside lip really well because that is going to be a little bit visible uh, in the final product There we go, one light coat, we'll let that dry. I have these two already done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these in and then uh, we'll go ahead and get at least two of them started. All right, we saved. The last one best for last last rod tube that needs to go in i'm gonna show you guys exactly how i do all these rod tubes as far as installing them you do have to give this a little bit of a twist it's a little a little tough to get started but once you got it in there it just slides right in i try to bring this all the way forward as much as possible notice how i do not have a hole drilled yet for this one but i like to get in here kind of get an idea of where i need to put that uh, hole saw once i have a good idea of that i back it out a little bit Ugh, enough to get the drill in put it about where I think this needs to go. Nice. So now I bring the tube all the way up back to the hole and I just set it in there just a little bit, just like that. Heat gun all the way up all the way up on heat and we just start cooking marshmallows that's all we're doing here if you get it a little brown that's okay but you just don't want it to the point where it's unedible this takes a much longer than you would expect it to as well so keep that in mind and it's also not very fun to do when it's 90 degrees outside when you're messing with a heat gun but gotta do what you gotta do right some of these you have to end up getting a little bit warmer than others uh, some of them are going to take more of a bend than others are going to do 
especially the bottom ones or at least in this mod v because of the contour of the bottom of the hole and when you're doing your rods notice that i started from the bottom and went up if you start from the top and go down you're gonna have one heck of a time getting all these in i promise you so start from the bottom and work your way up this one i'm not going to have to heat too much simply because the majority of this tube is straight already um so i'm not going to give this a whole lot of heat but we do need to give it some and i'll just kind of show you what i had to do for more for the other tubes really once I get this a little bit, once I get this a little hot, I will turn it 180 degrees, do it to the backside. That way everything is getting heat. All right, I think that's enough. Turn that off. Go ahead and twist and push. Oh no. What the, what the f Oh gosh, I have a complete disaster up under there that I was not aware of. Which one is it? All right, that looks good. You can see already without me doing anything, it's already like changing shape. Oh yeah, see how flimsy that is? We're gonna go ahead and twist and push it in as you go. And then once it's already in, make sure it's okay. Now the main thing you want to worry about one is that your rod tube is all the way pushed forward, which ours is. Next thing is you want to make sure that these are literally as straight as far as they can be. So like these tubes are as straight for as long as possible. You want to make sure that they're not turning until they absolutely need to be. So for example, this one right here is straight all the way to this point when the hole starts really tapering in. So this one's straight for the most part for everything, but that's also the tube that has the straightest shot for anything. So you're gonna have a little bit of, you know, this is gonna look like a gaggle up in here, but it's just, you're putting all these tubes into such a small area up here when you have all of this room up here. So if I had done this the other way and put all 15 tubes in here, like I originally could have squeezed in on this faceplate, you can imagine the issues we'd be having down in this area. So that's something to think about. Just because you can get as many rods as possible up here doesn't mean that you're gonna get as many rods as possible back here. So that's why we opted to kind of bump that down. We're only putting nine in here, which is actually one or two more than I estimated us being able to put in here. So in my book, that's a win. We're, uh, we're gonna save the vinyl talk for a different video. We have to put a lot of that around in the rest of the boat. So I'll do a complete video on that. 
the rod tubes are obviously not they look really good when they're done but it's definitely by far not the easiest thing in the world to do so keep that in mind prepare to be able to make some changes on the fly depending on your hole type and your setup but other than that when everything's done the gator guards keep all the tubes in place so nothing will move i did stick a little bit of foam around in there as much as i possibly could um, just to you know give some reserve buoyancy where i can and uh yeah we're ready to move on to the next step so i appreciate you guys watching like this video if it helped you out in any way shape or form leave a comment if you have any questions comments concerns and also subscribe to the channel to follow to follow along with project wilson thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you in the next video